Here we have Josh Hader, one of the best left-handed pitchers in baseball, but a very unique delivery. Very unique delivery. So as we can see here with the picture to the upper right, he actually twists all the way around, right? He's showing his numbers. He's showing his name to the hitter, okay? But what he does is, at foot strike, he's able to square up his pelvis, which is what you saw with the Derek Jeter example with the, Steve, with the Max Scherzer example. They have lower upper half disassociation. The lower half starts to rotate. The upper half stays closed. But one of the major flaws that most pitchers do when they twist is their pelvis carries in the wrong direction. The di their direction is off. But another thing is they twist and then they don't untwist. They don't actually square up their pelvis. They actually twist and then they land closed. And then what has to happen is you have to rotate. The timing is going to be all out of whack, and it's going to be very difficult for you to throw the ball as hard as you possibly can, as accurately as you possibly can, and as efficiently as you possibly can. Okay, so if you twist, there has to be an untwist. We need to understand that. A lot of pitchers that I see that I deal with think it's really cool to twist. They see some of their, their favorite pitchers doing it, but they don't understand that you need to untwist that movement because in Newton's third law of physics, right, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So for every tilt, there is an untilt. Here's Clayton Kershaw. Fantastic delivery. Very unique delivery. But what we see here is his pelvis starts to tilt up, but then he's actually able to correct it into foot strike. So the picture to the upper right, right? The upper torso, the, the belt line is tilted slightly up. But as he goes into foot strike, the pelvis starts to level. Okay, so one of the major issues that you'll see is if a pitcher does tilt is the front hip will be higher than the back hip at foot strike. Okay, so it would basically be in this position. So here's a really important concept to grasp and to understand. When you push against something, it pushes back. Okay, so we have a, a track star here. As we can see, when he comes out of the block, right, his, his feet press against the block and he propels himself forward. He gets knee extension, and by getting knee extension, he's creating force into the ground, and that's translating into this big arm swing, this big, athletic, powerful arm swing. Because there is so much force he is getting to propel himself forward. Because his goal is to run as fast as he possibly can, as efficiently as possible. He's pushing into the ground, and the ground's pushing back against him and propelling him forward. The same thing with Chapman. He pushes into the ground, he puts force into the ground, his knee braces. That then allows him to rotate over his front leg, transfer force from the ground up through his leg into his core, torso, right? Then into the arm, then into the ball, okay? So he's able to maximize ground reaction force.